Hey, what's going on? It's Doug Cunnington here, and I'm going to be joined by Robin Ayer, and he runs a marketing agency. He hit me up on YouTube a couple weeks ago and said, hey, I've had great success with using the KGR for a client site. He's been showing me some of the results and screenshots on like how fast his site and his uh, pages were able to rank using KGR and it absolutely blew my mind. So we're going to dig into the details and learn a little bit more about Robin. So Robin, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm fine. Uh, this is great. I've, 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 been, I've been a fan of your work for, for months now um, and uh, it's, it's great to be here, Doug. Thank you for uh, inviting me on. My pleasure. Thanks for uh, joining me. And can you tell us your name a little bit about yourself and you know what your profession is? What are you What are you working on these days? Sure. Well, as you can probably tell from my accent, I'm uh, British. I run a small agency called Trailblazer 360 Marketing, or Trailblazer as I as I, as I say, in the East Midlands um, in the UK, not far from Derby, sort of between. Derby, Sheffield, and Nottingham. It's an agent that does uh, web development, particularly WordPress, uh, search engine optimization, uh, content creation, and lead generation. Uh, I have, a, I have a, a variety of clients from small businesses to fertility clinic to um, one-man bands to, um, to a whole different ra range of industries. So how did you get started, Robin, in marketing and, and working online in general? Sure. Well, I have had somewhat of a different career to um, your average person, and much of my career has been in, in marketing. Uh, and um, latterly, I was a marketing manager for an IT company uh, in, in Derby. The Brits say Derby, and over the Americans say Derby. And then I decided to set up my, uh, my own uh, marketing agency um, in 2015, in about October 2015. So I've been developing a handful of websites prior to that but as a marketing manager you get involved in so many things um, whether it's organizing events to managing the website to creating content and I, and I, I really enjoyed the online marketing and so when I started Trailblazer that is what I decided to pursue that specific area. Very good. And ha just curious, how's it been working on your own since 2015? That's roughly the time where I got laid off and then started working for myself. So how has it been? Has it been um, just, is it hard to get motivated? Do you know what to work on? Tell me about it. That's a really good question. I thoroughly enjoy my work. You have to enjoy your work, whatever you do, in, in whatever form, whatever work you're in, because you're at it so many hours a day and, and a week starting up i i think it was it, it was hard and a lot of small businesses um you know do do struggle i found working for myself initially from home it was a real struggle and so i therefore now work out of serviced offices incidentally in a place called cromford and and the um and sir richard arkwright's mill we, we say that's where the industrial revolution started it was one of the first factories and now it's a creative hub which is which is an interesting um, uh, correlation. So working for oneself, you have to get out and meet other people. So, so networking is, is very much something I do. And I'm also chairman of a local business organization now called Business Peak District. So I try, I try and get out and about. Uh, and also finding your specialism and your interest because online marketing is so broad. Do you focus on paid advertisements or social media? Are you a specialist content writer? Are you a, a hardcore techie? There are so many different areas and I do enjoy being a practitioner and I enjoy, enjoy the variety as well. So finding one's niche and being able to, being able to advise people as well, that, that's what really they pay you for. They pay for advice and to solve problems. And, and, and I do enjoy working with, with clients to help solve problems. You know, the first couple of years were hard. And, and I think one of the hardest things about being starting a small business and working for yourself is, is that you don't have anybody else to bounce ideas off. That is one of the biggest things. And you, you can employ a business coach and you can ask friends and family, but they really don't know. If, if, if you are struggling to look at a direction to go in or purchase a product or a service, you know, it, it's down to you at the end of the day and you don't have other people to bounce the ideas off. So that, I think, has, one of been, has been one of the hardest things to actually make decisions and convince yourself it's the right, something might be the right thing to do. Oh, yeah. I can relate <laughs> A lot to that. So let's get into the details of this site that you were telling me about. 
when was it created? Can you tell me about the content plan and just kind of how it was sort of in the beginning? Yeah. So uh, I was reading some notes I made earlier just to recollect. So the website, um, so one of my clients is a, is a business consultant and, um, and I met Joe through networking. And, um, and so the, the domain was registered in November 2016 and I started uh, and I built the website for her. But it wasn't until uh, July 2018 that we started to create content. Initially, it was just a, a brochure site, a, a, your typical small business brochure site. And so from July 2018, we started to create one article a month. And uh, it was possibly two articles, um, if, if two shorter articles or, or one longer one. And we now have a total of 20 articles on the website. That's how it really developed. All right. And about how long, you know, you mentioned some shorter articles and some longer ones. So can you just ballpark how long each, each one of those were? Um, in terms of number of words? Yep. Yeah. So I try and write at least 2000 words for an article. I've made a few notes. And one of the things is you have to be the best answer. If you aren't the best answer, it's just not going to cut the mustard, Doug. Writing 300 words if you, uh, for, for a site, generally speaking, um, isn't going to rank, let's say, nationally, because it's, this isn't an affiliate site. So what you are a aiming to do is rank nationally. And, and of course, ranking locally would, would, would help. But we're not looking for something like Sheffield Plumber or Manchester Carpenter. You know, we're talking for longer, longer keywords. About yeah, 2,000 yeah, words yeah. Um, sure. in, in general. Those were for the shorter articles? No, so those are the longer ones. So I okay. might have written, I might have written a couple of 1,000 word articles, but typically as we progressed, one article every month was about 2,000 words. Got it. And then from the keyword research standpoint, was it hard to find the keywords? And do you have any tips? Because sometimes mm -hmm. people, when they're getting started, they, they think, hey, there's no keywords. And if I know business consulting type keywords are, you know, it's very competitive. People want to rank for that. There are a lot of businesses, big and small. So how was the process for finding these keywords? That is a great question because it was sometimes quite hard because this, this was to all intents and purposes a new site. It had a low domain rating. It was a, a typical small business brochure site. It didn't rank for particularly much. Uh, didn't get a lot of traffic. Yeah. So finding the keyword was was really quite hard because there's this 250 volume per month uh, barrier. And depending on which keyword tool you use, um, you might get quite, quite, quite a discrepancy between SEMrush, for example, or Ahrefs. But, but you have to use these tools as a guide. It's not written in stone. So as long as you, as, as long as you get over the hurdle that these tools are a guide, you're on the right path. But also, some of the uh, specific keywords didn't actually make much sense in English. And although it might be what people type in, you end up trying to almost shoehorn it into something to fit and so while the keyword might be something like uh, something um, like best road bikes under two thousand pounds for example actually what people are searching for is what is the best bike under two thousand pounds or the top 10 bike under two thousand two thousand pounds and and i often tell my clients this um, it, it might seem fairly straightforward but Google search is called search for a reason because people want answers to the questions. So to term, so although the KGR may not in itself be a question, turning that into a question is helping people. It's all about search intent and relevancy. And, 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 and while, while their query might not be a question, your article is a question. And and trying to massage that with with that very very specific keyword and get a, a, a title and therefore formulate the, the result it does take a bit of massaging um, and on some sometimes you, know, you could be looking searching for a, a keyword for a couple of hours you know just to get the right one uh, but it seems to have worked so far yeah definitely working in i forgot to ask this early on so you went from roughly almost no traffic to about 6,000 per month. So, yes. 
over time, it, it sort of built up, but it looked like it was sort of stagnant for a little while. And, you know, you mentioned that it was roughly a, um, a brand new site, not much content for about two years or so. And then in July of 2018, so it's almost been two years, you've been publishing more often. There's only 20 articles and they're, they're ranking quite well. So do you happen to remember how much traffic there was um, prior to the 2018 period must be a few yeah. hundred per month or so a little less than that no it, it was a typical brochure it, it was a typical brochure site a typical marketing site you know it got some traction from social media we were posting on social media but no until we started creating content and blogging then um it it, it was a typical local business site for a very small business so we, we started to publish um, one article a month uh, from about July 2018 up until February, March of this year, 2020. Traffic grew and grew, and it did tend to plateau during 2019. But I think the cumulative effect of posting regularly and also Google updates, which we seem to have benefited from, we're now getting, so I think we were eight shy of 6,000 last month. And if, if this month continues um, as it is, we could be, you know, six and a half thousand unique users. OK, not 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 sessions, um, but uh, unique users. It was 92 percent of that is organic search. So it's not direct search. It's not paid advertisements uh, or social media. Well, the other eight percent is. But 92% right. of it was organic search. It's possibly that you were asking about results and, and, and so forth. And I'm sure you're familiar with this term. But can, can, can I just sort of give a, a bird's eye view of what some of these statistics, statistics are? There is a term that uh, search engine optimizers, optimizers and marketers tend to use, and that's called visibility which I'm sure you're, you're, you're aware of, Doug, and it's a term that many of the SEO tools use. Traffic actually tends to come from both the USA and the UK. So it's 50-50, and it's 50% of, and, and a handful of other countries, but it tends to be English, for obvious reasons, English-speaking countries, and half on mobile and half on desktop as well. And so as of today, the, uh, so we are we have 20 articles and we're tracking 20 different keywords. Of course, it ranks for each page will rank for a different many, many different keywords. I'm tracking 20 keywords on desktop and 20 on mobile. And the desktop visibility today is 39 percent. And the mobile visibility today is is 43 percent. And, and they're very, very similar results in um, what they rank for. So out of the 20 articles, uh, 14 of them are on page one for their chosen keyword. On desktop, five of them are in position one, and two of them are the featured snippet. Six are in position two. So again, I'm looking over your head because I've got another screen behind me. Six are in position two, two are in position three, and one is in position six. So the other six articles are generally on pages two and three. OK, and it's very similar for mobile. In, but in fact, today we've got we've got three featured snippets out of the five that are in position number one. Uh, three of them are featured snippets. Um, yeah. So very good. That's just a bit of background. And there's a few things I want to point out here because. Well, it's funny, a lot of people do push back on the KGR, which is just a tool that we can use. I'm not mm. really dogmatic about it or anything like that. But a lot of people say, you know what, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense that it would work. And they, they usually just haven't tried it. And then there's another group of right. folks who say this will only work for affiliate sites, which I'm not sure the logic behind that, but this is clearly more general topics, often informational in, in nature. And it's for a business consultant. So straight up small business. And some of the other issues people seem to think it doesn't work quickly and you were showing me some data earlier mm -hmm. and explaining you know the general process which i think a lot of people do is to publish the article go over to this google search console index you can force index to make sure that it happens a little more quickly and then um robin you were doing that and how fast were some of these showing up in the top 10 yeah really quickly so I, I did exactly that. I pressed publish. I took the URL, posted it into Google Search Console, and my 
fastest appearance on page one for that very specific keyword was 43 seconds. OK, um, but it might have happened a bit earlier. Um, you know, I, I, it just took me 43 seconds to type it in and uh, open up uh, incognito and, um, you yeah, know, and, and press enter. Uh, it, it does happen very, very fast. And, you know, some people may think, hey, it showed up there and then it, it disappeared. Um, so I suspect, you know, from the stats you were telling me, it sounds like the majority of the 20 articles are ranking for the keyword that you were intending. So. Do these have staying power? Another great question. What I find is that with any article you publish, there is a period of volatility and it can drop below below page one. <clears throat> and uh, and then over time, it might then gradually build up again. But I still get vo volatility. So even though I mentioned a moment ago, desktop visibility is 39, 39%, um, it, that could have been... 42 a couple of days ago and it could have been um thir 36 it tends to be high 30s low 40s at the moment but that's just an indication of, of of um how close they are to position number one so which relates to your question about where they where they rank so individual keywords have some volatility it can be it, it can still be number one today number two tomorrow and then back to number one or it could hover between you know, the lower down the page. So although it, it might go straight in at number five, um, sure. it could be that it drops no, it, when I, uh, a week later after I published it, it could drop down to page two and then it builds up. And as I said a moment ago, I think, I think the cumulative effect of posting really, really good content that answers people's questions and Google uh, recognizes recognizes you for that. I, I, I think it is 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 the real it is the real key. Very good, and yeah, I agree with the the volatility that often that happens, like in general. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned earlier that some of the recent Google updates seem to have helped your site, and that's another another thing that I get pushed back. Well, hey, KGR keyword golden ratio is not going to work because. Google's aiming for searcher intent. And from where I sit, it seems like it should help because people are looking very specifically for mm. certain terms. It's ultra, ultra focused. So obviously you have some opinions on it since it seems to be working out. But what, what's your thought on it? Well, on Google updates, I monitor several sites for my clients. And I think when there is an update and you see some volatility, I think the first thing to do is not panic. Because often, after a couple of weeks, they return to the same level that they were. I think there are two things with producing content. I think you've got to be consistent in producing quality content that answers people's questions. Uh, keyword research is so important. It's all very well. Let me just say, search engines, not search engines are just one form of traffic. You might get lots from social media or paid advertisements or, or presenting at events. It's important to create great content around a certain topic. So my client was business consulting, but we have also written articles about weight loss and well-being. Um, and certainly well-being may come into both weight loss and, um, and uh, the business environment. But I think to keep on a topic and to be known for a topic, which is about the website is known for a topic, I don't think, let's say the KGR, would be an issue if you are posting quality content all around a certain topic. It is very, very focused. It is all about, I will say broadly, business consulting, and it is posted regularly. I think, I think those go in its favor. It's not as if you're ticking a box in Google Search Console saying, this is keyword golden ratio. No, it, it's quality content on a very specific topic. Very good. And as far as link building, are there many links going to this site? Did you do any link building um, while you were publishing KGR articles? A little. So the link building I did was was really in citations and local business. I will say I'll broadly say directories. OK, so, yes, we did that. I didn't do um, any outreach to sites linking to competitors, for example. No, this, this was largely on, 
I say again, just posting what I, what I believe to be quality content on very specific topics. And just curious from a content production standpoint, um, who, who is writing the articles? Do you outsource these things? Does the owner of the site write it? No. So um, my client essentially gave me a, a carte blanche to, to create topics based around topics that we had previously agreed on. I researched the KGR. What I did was then, I'm happy to, happy to elaborate on this because I think it's quite important if you, if you want. And I wrote out the outline and then a locally based writer who I'm more than happy to share details with wrote the article. But it was all based on the outline and the ideas and the concepts that I had written. So I would give it to Laura. A couple of days later, a week later or whatever, would come out with 2,000 words. But then what is in the article, whether it's um, calls to actions, graphs, charts, and so forth, uh, are, are so important as well to the con- to the quality of that content. So finding that magical keyword, creating a title and uh, various headings and content, and then giving it to Laura, who, who, who wrote very, very well. Awesome. About how long was the outline? How detailed are these? Uh, that's a good point. My method for creating an article, and it's, and it's really any article, is if I've given myself a heading, I try and answer the question myself before even doing anything else. So let's just say it's the best uh, road bike under two thousand pounds, <clears throat> and I say, well, what? And I'd, I'd ask myself, and I'd be documenting this. It's a bit of a brain dump onto a, a word document, and I'd put it in headings and think, well, what might it be? So you've got the frame, looking at my bike. Uh, you've got the frame. You've got the handlebars. You've got wheels. You've got a seat. You've got clothing. Uh, whether that's do the bike, and then so each of those could be a heading, and then so. Those are my initial thoughts. And then you go and look at what is on page one of Google. And you must be the best answer. And then you fill in the blanks with what they are saying. So you then end up with, I'll say a long list, but certainly various headings and bullet points that I can then pass to our content writer to, I'm not going to say fill in the blanks, but it, it, gives, it gives her a, a great start to write about a topic when you're saying these are the top 10 links. This is what they are saying. These are the headings I want. So she has a flow that she can then follow. I find it's quite a good practice as well. Again, just to try and, even if you're just reading a newsletter, for example, let's say uh, an email about marketing, for example, or search engine optimization, and um, it might have some 20, the 20 greatest link building tactics ever known to man. And so before clicking that link, I'm, I'm, I'm going to see, I'm, I try and test myself and go, okay, what are they? It's one, two, three, four, five. And I might come out with 15, let's say. And so I'll go and read the article and, and are my assumptions right? Are they wrong? Having a crack at it, first of all, and then going to see what Google ranks, combining those, I think you get a longer and uh, potentially fuller article. And just a quick summary. So often you'll have a keyword in mind that you've worked with or with a client, you have the keyword research done, you will do a brain dump, you'll get your initial questions, your thoughts, then you'll do sort of a gap analysis between your brain dump and say the top 10 results on Google, and then you patch up the holes and when you do a gap analysis, you're able to see like, okay, we need these topics covered and then I would guess your outlines range from one to four pages, depending on how many details you add. Spot on. That's okay. it. I think. I think as well as I, when you found that keyword golden ratio keyword, what I would also do is go and look at who does rank already for these before you've even made the decision to go with it. This is where also keyword keyword research tools come in handy because. If the top 10 are just r- real beasts of sites re- with a really high domain rating or the keyword difficulty is is really high, then you might want to consider looking for another keyword. So I guess the, the, the ideal solution would be to be in the keyword golden ratio for a start, to have a uh, th- those ranking on page one are of a low domain authority, domain rating, 
and the keyword itself is a um, is a low keyword difficulty. Now that might be trying to find a unicorn, <clears throat> but if from a cursory glance, the top ten results in Google aren't really, really, really all authoritative. You might have two or three lower, um, lower authority sites. If you see those, then I believe you have a far better chance than if they were just the BBC, uh, New York Times, Ernst & Young Consulting, or, 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 or whatever. It's worth spending time looking at the keyword ratio, uh, golden ratio, the actual keyword, and seeing who ranks for it already, even if it's just a, a bit of a gloss over, because it is quite time consuming. You know, I'd spend two or three hours looking for the keyword, preparing the brief, uh, and, and, and preparing the brief. So, Gotcha. And I know a lot of people are wondering how much are you paying for the content? So say for a 2000 word post, if you can share that. Yeah, so I would pay um, between UK pounds, probably between 80 and 120 pounds to, um, so what's that, $140 probably um, okay. to, uh, to write that article. Okay, cool, and that's a local person you know. Yeah. In town. Yeah. And I'm curious, so, and we were chatting about this before, I found it a little interesting, but what does the client think about the additional traffic that she's getting? Well, it's funny. So, so my client has a full-time job anyway. So the website that I'm creating, creating content for is ideally um, a business that she can take and run with when either her contract finishes um, or she decides to move on. So she loves the, the, the amount of traffic, traffic she gets, but she does work full time in an existing job anyway. So how much time she really spends on this site um, is, 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 is entirely up to her. I don't think it's particularly much uh, simply because she's, she's working full time elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But as an exercise in building a very small business um, web, website and, and getting good traffic from just 20 posts. I'd do it till the cow, I, I would do it until the cows come home. You know, it, it seems to work. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And I mean, it's kind of cool, you know, thinking of like a side hustle, when she's ready, perhaps she can, I mean, it looks like the traffic trajectory, which we'll, we'll share the graphs and stuff for the folks that can see on YouTube. Basically, it's going up. Uh, quite rapidly and perhaps she'll have something to go to and have customers, uh, potential customers when she's ready to do it. So as we're finishing up here, there's a lot of agencies out there. There's a lot of marketing folks. If they're looking to recreate the success that you're getting for your client, do you have any tips for them to, obviously you said, you know, quality content is number one, but any other tips for sort of like maybe packaging this up or, or marketing like KGR to get quick wins for your clients? I wonder if I would go to a client and say, I would use the keyword golden, golden ratio. I think it would just be way over the head because I think most most small businesses are skilled at what they do. When I discuss SEO with clients, it sometimes just goes way over the head. And all they want is, let's say, content creating or, or to rank higher in Google. How you actually go about that, uh, that's just getting into the nitty gritty. It's not sort of you're doing anything illegal. You know, it is just a tactic that we use, get traffic and rank websites. What you could do is, is to say, this is a business's website that I've, that I've ranked in the past. I, I can now go to clients, I'm not saying now go to, but I, I, I go to clients and I say, look, I'm now getting um, 6,000 unique users a month and this is what I can do for you as well. Of course, you then have to put meat on the bone and discuss the actual tactics that, that you're, going to, you're going to be building with them. But the overall principle is that um, you know, this is what I've done for client A now let's do it for client B. But at the end of the day, it's it, it really is, you have to be the best answer. You absolutely have to be the best answer. If you are only as good as what is already there, then you don't stand a chance of, of, of ranking. Be the best and write quality content. And, and that also involves nice images. It might be charts and graphs. It's quality content at the end of the day. I think that, that, that's what I'd advise. Awesome. And uh, where can people find you, Robin? 
they can visit Trailblazer360, that's 360.com. They can uh, find me geographically in Derbyshire, or um, uh, not far from Derby, or as the Americans say, Derby. Or you can email me at robin, R-O-B-I-N, at trailblazer360.com. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing the story here. And I'll put links in the description and show notes so people can reach out to you. And I suspect, since you've had good results, that people will probably actually want to talk to you quite a bit. (laughs) Great. Great. So thanks a lot, Robin. Appreciate it. Well, thank you very much, Doug. It's been a real pleasure to be uh, invited onto the show. Thank you very much.